So now we got a corpse with no evidence to tie him to a $5 million jewelry heist. Better go get a hat, big guy. Your horns are showing. What was your opening line, huh? How'd you come on to her? You like doing it? Uh, I'm open to suggestions. Hunter got acquainted with her on the train, and now he's undercover. I guess it's love at first sight for both of you, then, huh? I couldn't help myself. <laughs> for me. All right, let's do this thing. Okay. Against the wall. Come on. Do as we see and nobody gets hurt. You heard him. Get over there. Come on, move. Come on, keep back. How much time? How much time? Come on. We've got a minute. Where's the diamonds? I don't know. Forget about them. Let's go. Come on. You come said on. there was diamonds. Where's the diamonds? Come on. I said where's the diamonds? They're in the vault. Let's split it, man. Come on. Open it. I said open it. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Can you describe their voices? Uh, one of them, uh, the one who did the shooting, he had an accent, just slightly. Uh, what kind of an accent? 
I'm not sure. Hispanic, I think. Did you notice anything unusual about their behavior? No. Just that one of them seemed to be in charge. Which one, the shooter? Right. The other one was nervous, in a hurry. But his partner wasn't. No. He was cool. Cold. Now, you felt that one of these men had been in your store before because he knew that the diamonds were not out on the floor, right? Well, yes, but hundreds of people shop in here every week. Wanted to see us, Captain? Yeah. Update me. What's your progress? Well, we ran the hammer and the sweater. Both came from local stores. Any leads on who bought them? Uh, no, they were cash purchases. The clerks don't remember anybody in particular. How about the witnesses? There's not much to go on there either. No hard descriptions, anyway. Uh, they did say one of the guys had a slight Hispanic accent. Ballistics? Nine millimeter automatic. So what do you got? Well, we think one of the perpetrators may be a dipper. Say again? We think one of the perpetrators may be a dipper. We found uh, snuff in the Ferrari. The owner of the car says that he doesn't use it and doesn't know anybody that does. That's it? Yes. And all that you can tell me is we might be looking for a Latino who's going smokeless? Well, I don't think it's quite that bleak, Captain. No, it's pretty bleak, Sergeant. I mean, we have two armed robbers that don't hesitate to blow away an innocent customer just to make a point. Now I have to issue a press release, and I am damned if I am going to say that we suspect that one of the culprits might be a Chicano with a pinch between his cheek and gum. Now that's bleak. Well, why don't you just use uh, stock release number five, sources close to the investigation say that an arrest is imminent. Because my sources don't indicate any such thing, unless you two have another secret game plan you're not sharing. Well, we're gonna interview all the store's former employees. You think somebody got fired, came back, knocked off the place for spite, and nobody recognized him? Well, maybe one of them set it up. Check it out. You're Scott Trevor? Yes. Did uh, someone refer you? Yes, your former employer. Well, how nice. Oh, are you interested in a vacation package by any chance? We have some excellent bargains right now, based on double occupancy. Uh, no, we're not a couple. We're a couple of police officers. We're just uh, here to ask you a couple of questions, Scott. What about? The jewelry store you used to work at? You left last month. How come? I couldn't take the pressure. Pressure? Do you know how much the jewels in that store were worth? Millions. Yeah, we know that. So what? So staying alive, that's so what? The place made me so nervous my ulcer had an ulcer. Do you have any idea how many fancy jewelry stores have been robbed in the last few years? Well, did you know that the store you used to work at was robbed a few days ago? Do I know? I have been saying prayers of Thanksgiving that I left that place when I did. That poor man they shot could have been me. Yeah, well, try to get a hold on yourself, Scott. Uh, look, Sergeant Hunter and I are homicide detectives. We thought maybe you might be able to help us. Did anything unusual occur the last week you worked there? Just I took an unusually large number of ulcer pills. Do you remember waiting on any Hispanic customers? A few. From Mexico City. Very rich. Did any Hispanics work at the store? Are you kidding? That manager's a man of deep prejudice. He wouldn't hire one. Anybody strike you as peculiar? Half the people who came into that place were peculiar in one way or another. Well, try suspicious. They were all suspicious. At least this job is safe. <laughs> Nobody shoots travel agents. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much for your time. And if you do think of anything that uh, might be able to help us, give us a call, will you? Oh, one last question, Scott. Did you ever uh, see anybody in the store dip snuff? Snuff? Certainly not. It's a disgusting habit. Yeah, well, uh, none of us are perfect. If you happen to think of anybody that might have used it, please let us know, huh? Well, there was that uh, messenger. He made a delivery on a motorcycle. I guess they think that sort of thing is macho. What are you talking about? Well, I don't know his name. It was the only time I ever saw him. Didn't make a very good impression on me, the way he shoved it under his lip. Can you imagine kissing somebody like that? Not personally, no. Uh, do you remember the name of the service, the messenger service? Oh, um, it was that one with the cute little logo. Uh, the wheel with the wings. What was that? Mercury Express. Do you want to give odds on this? I'll lay it 10 to 1. I love that type of talk. But no bet.
Jerry Burrell. Jerry Wade Burrell. Basic small time hood. The biggest thing this creep ever boosted was a compact car. Say I made a recent career move, wouldn't you? Well, he's not going to answer any questions in an air conditioned drawer, that's for sure. So now we got a corpse with no evidence to tie him to a $5 million jewelry heist. Nothing on him, nothing in his apartment, except this. Photograph was taken a couple of weeks ago. The other guy there is Carlos Moreno. He and Burrell did time in 1983. What was he in for? Receiving stolen goods. Hi, sorry I'm late. What do you got? Well, I got some good news and got some bad. Give me the good news. Good news is Moreno speaks with a Hispanic accent. That's the good. What's the bad? Bad is he skipped. Hasn't seen his parole officer since the heist. Recall that's the good news. Who's the girl? I'll find that out. Let me see that. She looks familiar. Here she is. You sure? I'm positive. Here. Take a look. Similar types, I guess. A similar type? What are you, casting director? That's her. Look at that. Golden West Modeling. Hi, this is Mary Brewster, vice president of SJC Studios Casting. I understand that you represent an Angelita Chavira. Angie Chavira? Yes. Why, are you interested in her? Well, uh, no, but my executive producer is. He'd like very much to have an interview with her. Well, if you're in a hurry, you can catch her at La Rouge. She's doing a businessman's luncheon until 2. This number can be seen at Bradford's in four different colors for $79.95. That is a number. Look at this. Oh, Will you please, guys? Does that include you, too? <laughs> Do you deliver? What's your number priced at? If you have to ask, you can't afford it. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> You know, if we show her that photograph, she'll just deny it's her. Yeah, but her reaction could tell us different. It'll just tip Marino off that we're on to him. Well, so what do you want to do? Do you want to just stick with her until Marino tries to contact her? Well, if he doesn't, he's crazy. Better go get a hat, big guy. Your horns are showing. I'll call in and get permission for 24-hour surveillance. Would you like to uh, stay and keep an eye on her? It'll be hell, but uh, I'll do it. Hang up, she's moving out. Come on.
stay with her. That woman I just left here, where's she going? Hey, buddy, the line forms at the rear. Police? San Diego. San Diego, thank you very much. I'm excuse, all right? Hey, no problem. Your attention, please. This is the last call for train She's number She's going five. south. Yeah, so are we. You better call this thing in. You gotta beat this train to San Diego. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that is a three-hour drive. You better get going. Now boarding on track nine. Leaving for San Diego in 10 minutes. Please. This is the last call for train number 578. Smoking or not smoking? No, I'm not I didn't mean to. I... Yeah, I think you did. I... Well, what'll it be, uh, sir? Whatever it is, I'll pay for it. Well, that's all right. You don't have to. No, really, I insist. <laughs> be careful. Thank you for the drink. You're welcome. Nice meeting you. Rick, Rick McPherson. Angie, Angie Shavira. Angie, thanks for spilling your drink on me. <laughs> My pleasure. I'm in hot pursuit here. Hot pursuit? Where's your cherry light? Where's your siren? Look, I don't have time to... Officer, I have to be in San Diego before the 2 o'clock train gets there. Now, the reason I don't have the siren and the cherry light going is because I know it's not a code 3, and I know I'm going to make it, I hope, if you just let me get out of here. OK, OK, go. You'd be better off on the freeway. I just got off the freeway. And get that tail light fixed. So is San Diego your home? It used to be. I left right after high school. Oh, well, you're coming back for a visit then. Well, I have some friends I like to keep in touch with. Is your family there? No. No, my family lives in Guatemala. You want me to fill it up for you? I thought this was a self-serve station. Well, it is for most people. But for you, I'd be willing to make an exception. Well, don't bother. The car's filthy enough already. Are you on vacation? Well, sort of. I'm, uh, how do you say, uh, kind of in between assignments? I think they call it unemployed. Yes, they do. Sounds like you got trouble to me, darling. You want me to take a look at it for you? Yeah, would you please? Hey, my pleasure. We always service what we sell.
What did you do? You mean what kind of work am I out of? I was in electronics design. So you think the grass may be greener in San Diego? Well, I've got a job interview Friday morning. Perhaps the grass is greener. Who knows? I think about moving back there sometimes myself. Your attention, please. Oceanside is our next station stop. Oceanside. I guess things should be a lot worse, huh? Things have been worse. But for you, personally? It was personal, all right. I was 14 years old. They took me and about 20 other people and they dumped us out in the middle of that desert out there. It's not too far from here if you just count miles. Yeah, but you made it. Yeah. Yeah, I made it. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? It's just that sometimes I forget how lucky I am. I'm even a citizen now. <laughs> I really made it. Congratulations. Model. Uh, I knew I'd seen you someplace before. On a commercial, maybe? Maybe. You know, you've probably heard this a million times, but uh, and it may be very cliche-ish, but I'm going to say it anyway. You're very beautiful. Thank you. You like doing it? What? Modeling. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Does the prize-winning cow like being a piece of meat? <laughs> Your attention, please. Now entering San Diego. Have you been here before? Oh, just once for the weekend, about 10 years ago. How would you like a personal tour guide? Might be fun to show you around if you have the time. Oh, boy, I'd love that. But it all depends if I get this job or not. How long you got to be in town? I'm not sure. I took a week off. But I'm open to suggestions. Got your luggage. Oh, I checked it through. I'll go back and get it. Well, you know where I'm staying. Give me a call if you want the 25 cent tour. Angie, I'd really like to see you tonight. But I gotta be with some friends. I understand. Let me know if you change your plans. I will. Don't ask. Sweet, huh? 
Was that the word? Yes, it was. Also beautiful. Felt bad lying to her, though. Hunter, you're not getting involved here, are you? I mean, I know she's beautiful and she's sweet, but she's also a suspect. What are you talking about, a suspect? She's not a suspect. She may know somebody who's a suspect, but we're not even sure about him. Hell, we're not even sure that she's a girl in the picture. Uh, wrong. You're not sure. I am. Moreno couldn't meet with her in L.A. It was too dangerous, so he came down here to meet with her, and I'd bet on it. Well, you didn't spend three hours talking to her on the train like I did. Oh. So, uh, what was your opening line, huh? How'd you come on to her? Opening line? What do you mean, opening line? I didn't try to meet her. No? That wasn't you that was drooling in his drink at the bar when she walked by in her skivvies? Funny, I thought that was you. Look like you. Well, what do you know? She said she was staying at this motel, and she's staying at this motel. I guess it's love at first sight for both of you, then, huh? You know what you sound like? You sound like a jealous woman. Jealous? Hunter, look, this is the deal. You're my partner. You're a cop. I just think you ought to act like one. I think that in this particular situation, you are not being totally professional. Wait a minute. What's not professional about it? All I'm doing is capitalizing on the fact that I met this beautiful woman on the train. What's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with it, just as long as you don't lose sight of the fact that she's a suspect. No, wait a minute. You got that wrong. She's not a suspect. She is a lead. If I can stay close to her, then uh, that makes for better police work, right? Right, right. And I suppose when you're not with her, that's when I go in and take over. And, and if we're real lucky, you're not going to need me at all, right? <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I laughing for? If I am right, this isn't very funny. As a matter of fact, it could be kind of dangerous. Especially for you. Hunter got acquainted with her on the train, and now he's undercover. Guess you could call that a lucky break. Well, what took you so long to check in? Well, Captain, this is the first chance uh, I've had to call in. You see, as soon as we put her under surveillance, she picked up a suitcase and she got on a train to San Diego. It's the first chance I've had. Well, this is an awful lot of trouble to go to for someone who's not even a suspect. Captain, look, I know that she's not a suspect, but uh, she could lead us to one, right? <sighs> OK. You want us to do anything up here? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'd like the computer boys to do a complete rundown on her and get back to me with whatever they find. What's the name? Angelita Chavira, C-H-A-V-I-R-A. Golden West uh, Modeling has her work history in her dress. OK. Look, how long is this going to take now? Captain, look, if the guy doesn't show in a couple days, we'll call it a bad hunch and we'll come home, all right? How much money do you need? The motel room was $40 a day, and Hunter had to buy a new sports jacket and a shirt.
this latitude is minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The wind chill factor, however, frequently reduces this figure to 60 degrees below zero. The movement of deep ocean water, which is primary. Thank you. Rick, I get this feeling that you've learned a lot more about me than I've learned about you. Are you hiding something from me? Like what? Well, I know you're not married. And it's not just because you said you aren't. But I do get this feeling that... that you have a girlfriend. Somebody that you care for a lot. Well, uh, I do have a friend, a woman. But we're not boyfriend and girlfriend. We're just very close. But you don't care for her? I care for her very much. Sometimes I, I wonder what it would be like to... Uh... What it would be like to make love to her. So why don't you? Well, we are very good friends, like I say, and uh, she looks out for me and I look out for her. I like it like that. I wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize that. I envy your friend, Rick. I envy her very much. And salinity is called thermohaline circulation. In the Antarctic region, the dense cold water sinks and flows slowly northward. Increased salinity also in... What is this all about, Rick? Sit down. Please explain this to me. What is going on here? I'm a detective from L.A. Metro Homicide. I followed you on the train. Why? I don't understand this, Rick. Why did you lie to me? You know who that is? Where did you get this? From Jerry Burrell's effects. Effects? You mean he's dead? Yes. How well do you know him? I just met him this once when this picture was taken. Carlos said that he was a friend of his from I don't know, somewhere back east or something. What did he do? You really don't know, do you? I have no idea what is going on here. I don't understand. Varela Moreno stole five million dollars worth of diamonds from a store in Los Angeles, and they, they killed a customer in the process. No. No, I don't believe it. It's true. How well do you know Marino? 
I've dated him a few times. He calls me every couple of months. He always spends a lot of money on me. Takes me to exciting places. He said he made his living from investments. Yeah, he's right, he does. Other people's. Rick. Why didn't you just ask me about all this from the beginning? Why did you lie to me? Tell me that you were an engineer. Is, is that all a part of your job? Yes, it is, Angie. And why did you make love to me? Because I couldn't help myself. And you should have trusted me. Angie, I'm a cop. And there was a possibility that you came down here to meet Marino. I did. But I didn't know I was going to meet you along the way. Must know where Marino is. No. No, he just said he would call me here by tomorrow. That we would fly to Cancun or somewhere. What is it, Rick? What do you want me to do? Just tell me. What? You left her alone in that room with no surveillance, no nothing? Hunter, all she's got to do is call Moreno when he's out of there. Look, if she's going to tip him off, it doesn't make any difference if she's being watched or not. Besides, I decided to trust her. Why? Well, I had no choice. I'd already been made. Well, I hope she was gentle with you. Oh, be nice now. The next thing you're going to want is a little bowl of milk down here. Look, if she wasn't being straight with me, why would she say that she's coming down here to meet Moreno in the first place? She didn't need to say that. So you expect her to call you as soon as he gets in touch with her? Is that it? Right. Did the report on her come back yet? Yeah, uh, I got it. Well? She's clean as a whistle. Mm. Probably for you. Hello. Rick? Hi. I just got a message, a note from Carlos. What did it say? He says he wants me to come to the Poinsettia Motel in San Isidro. He says take a cab and give false directions till you know you're not being followed by that tall guy you've been spending time with. And then take Cumberland Street to the motel. He's in room 24. What do you think it means? Well, he's trying to be sure I'm not following. Rick, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. I'm not so sure about this. I'm frightened. Now, listen to me. Do exactly as he says. Now, don't worry about anything. It's probably just a test. He probably won't even show up. Now, either way, I'll be there ahead of you, OK? All right, that makes me feel a lot better. But I wish you were here with me right now. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah, me too. Bye. Well, I wonder who that was. Well, I hate to tell you I told you so. Then don't. Carlos, it's me, Angie. 
Nanita. I missed you. Where are they? You want to see them, don't you? You know I do. I got them right here, don't worry. Where? Beautiful. And I know how to sell them for top dollar. We'll end up with over a couple of million bucks. Oh, oh that's beautiful. So are you, Nanita. We haven't got time for this. That man is outside. What? You let him follow you? He's a private detective. He said he wants a payoff or he'll go to the police. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about. Is he alone? He's in a phone booth by the office. Now listen to me very carefully. There's a brown sedan around the side. Put this in it. Drive down the alley and pick me up. You got it? What are you going to do? I'm going to give him his payoff in one installment.
Hunter, you know Mr. Griffin, the owner of the jewelry shop on Main Street? Oh, how do you do? Yes, Glad hi. to see you again. Hi. How are you? Uh, this is Mr. Caldwell, an adjuster for Allied Insurance. Hi. 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 Well, uh, everything's been accounted for. I would like to congratulate you on an excellent job. Thank you. Glad you got it back. It's rare in cases like this to retrieve every piece. Well, it's just lucky, I guess. Lucky? No such thing. This is an example of properly done police work. In fact, it's a model case. It's an example of the fine results that can be achieved when we stick closely to the strict rules of proper police procedure. 